In the comments, someone asked me to make a fire control system for some tanks. I have concluded that that is impossible, and that's what I said in the comments. And while I still do think it's impossible to make a good one, I tried to make at least something that could resemble one under some conditions. Because, you know, it was an interesting challenge. The first thing uh, when identifying any problems is figuring out what you actually need to achieve the result that you want. In this case, the most fundamental thing that I need, which everything else will be based around, is a way to detect and interact with something outside of just physical hitboxes. The list that I ended up coming to consisted of magnets, energy shields, distance sensors, and guns. Magnets can only affect other objects at a range of 5 meters, and that is very bad because I wanted to preferably hit 300 meters, which is the auto-aim distance. Next op ne uh, my next option was energy shields, which can only interact with the bullets, but they can interact with them at a bigger range. Sadly, because we're going to be tracking physical targets, like enemies, rather than something like where bullets are getting shot at, it's not an option either. That leaves distance sensors and guns. Distance sensors are possible in theory. The biggest problem with using them on a ground target is that they will get confused with the ground. There is technically a solution around this using quite a few logic gates. Instead of detecting and looking at when a distance sensor is on or when it's off, you set it up so that it sends a signal whenever it changes from on to off or from off to on. As long as you are perfectly stationary, this then tells you where things are moving. So then, therefore, you know where the target is. As I just said, though, this only works as long as you are still, first of all. Second of all, it requires a lot of sensors. And third of all, so I did the math, and using some triangles and trigonometry and stuff and a little bit of sign and whatnot, uh, the amount of distance sensors that would be required to get decent coverage at far range would consume an utterly obscene amount of complexity. The math that I did, uh, which is just to get like a small like section of your FOB covered with uh, one meter gaps at the edge of the range in between the sensor lines, it resulted in like a couple hundred complexity. So it's frankly completely unworkable. This comes back to just not using guns. Uh, my old project of using the auto-aim and feeding off of that information into something else uh, once again seems to be the most efficient option. So what I did is I went ahead and tried to mount it on my old tank. It's mostly heavy blocks, so it's pretty decent tank, um, very overweight, tends to crush itself very often, but it gets the job done. The first version, the way that I designed it was I had no dampening, uh, and I made it perfectly balanced because I knew that I was very likely going to be shooting at weird angles because, you know, tanks often end up going on, like, terrain and hills. Um, the problem here is that the oscillations ended up making it wobble back and forth. Uh, the reason why this was happening was because of the weight of the turret. The servos didn't have enough strength to properly control it. So in the next version, I just made the thing bigger. So I made the turret, the radar turret gun thing more responsive. I made the turret lighter weight, and then I slowed down the rotation of the turret. This already gave me much more accurate uh, responses and other such things, but the problem is that it instead slowed down the response speed of the radar. It made it harder for it to acquire the target in the first place. And that's another thing. For these specific ones, 
I was optimizing for making them able to hit targets that are stationary. If I was optimizing it to hit moving targets, the things that I would give it would be completely different. So this is just another one of those small trade-offs. Version 3, I went away from the perfectly balanced and symmetrical design and tried to make it as balanced as I could. It wasn't that balanced, but it got the job done without too much sway. It's just simple, it's cheap, it can get roughly in the direction of the enemy very consistently. Um, and the fourth version, uh, I, it was because the third version wasn't working so well, I ended up coming back to the third version and improving it so the fourth version is obsolete. So yeah, this is as close as I can get. It is good enough at far range, like at 200 meters or so, it can roughly get within the splash damage area pretty consistently on a non-moving target. However, doing it manually is still faster, more efficient, just better overall. Also, yes, these radars can act as just raw machine guns if needed. So, at least they aren't completely useless. But yeah, that's the conclusion of this project and how it's pretty much useless. But hey, if you want to try it, it's there.